Let's make a line chart. All we need to do from this scatter plot is to connect the dots. I think the only place we'll need to change is marks. In order to render a line chart with D3 and React and SVG, typically we make one path element. This path will contain a line consisting of many segments, and to set the overall shape, of this path, we need to set the D attribute to be something. I'll make this into valid code by adding these parentheses here, which makes this whole thing a JSX expression. And then we can put curly braces around the data.map part of it. And D needs to be defined as something in order for this to run. It looks like this is not valid syntax after all. I think what I'll do is I'll wrap everything in a JSX fragment. I think that should do the trick. There we go. Now this is valid syntax. But how do we define this D attribute of our path? This is where D3 shape comes in handy because it provides some utilities for lines. Invoking D3.line will construct a new line generator. And then invoking that line generator with our data, we'll generate the line for that data, meaning it will actually generate the string that we can pass in to the D attribute of SVG paths. So let's use D3.line. The first thing I'll do here is import line from D3. And then for our path, we can set D to be line to construct a new line generator, and we pass that our data. This is the overall structure, but we need to configure the line to use our scales. We can do that by using line.x and line.y. These set the accessor for x and y. Here's an example where the x accessor is set to be a function that takes as input one row of the data and returns the date passed through the x scale. We can apply a similar pattern. We can say line.x and pass a function that takes as input d one row. And we want to return the scaled value. So we can say x scale of x value of d. We can apply very similar logic to y. I can just replace all x's here with y's. And boom, look at that. We get a line. This is a bit problematic, though, because we don't want all this stuff to actually be filled in. It's filled in because we're just using the default value of fill on paths, which is black. So to override that, we can say fill is none. Now we don't see anything. In order to see something, scratch that. Now we don't see anything. And that's because the default value for stroke is none. So we need to overwrite that and say the stroke is, I don't know, let's say black. And now we get these lines in between our circles. This is what you might call a mixed visual encoding, where you've got circles and a line. This can be useful if you want to see the overall trend of the line, but also you want to see where the particular data points are that feed into that line, which sometimes it's hard to tell where they are. But anyway, let me just clean this up a bit. I don't quite like the fact that the lines are black, and I'd like them to be a little thicker, and maybe I'd like to make the points smaller. Currently, we're setting fill and stroke with JSX here, uh, but we're setting the fill of the circles using CSS via this class name. I'd like to unify everything to use CSS. So what I'm thinking is, instead of giving the circles a class name of mark, we can put all of these marks in a group element and give that group element a class name of marks. Then we can select marks.path to get at this path element and marks.circle to get at all of these circles. 
Now that I've changed this to be a group element, I've got to make sure that the closing tag matches to be a group element. And now we've lost our styling, so we've got to go back to our CSS, which is defined right here in the HTML. I was kind of hoping that this would be in a separate file. You know what, let me just move all this CSS into a separate file. That way we know exactly where to look and where to go when we want to change some CSS. And this file, index.html, will just serve to sort of orchestrate everything and won't contain that many fine grain details like all these styles. I'm going to cut this text out of here, make a new file called styles.css, and then I'll paste all of that CSS into here. And then we need to include this file on this page using a format very similar to this. Instead of a style tag, we need a link tag where the href is the path to the file, in this case just dot slash styles.css. You know, I think we don't actually need the dot slash. Now our CSS is loading and we can tell because the font is different. Okay, now that we've got our CSS in a separate file, we can apply our CSS to marks. This CSS no longer catches anything. Uh, this is for our circles, so we can say marks space circle to, to select all circle elements that fall within the marks group. And then we can select marks path to select our SVG path element that makes up the line. And for this, I'd like to set the stroke to be that same color as the circles. And we can also set stroke width to make it a little bit thicker. Stroke dash width. Let's set it to, say, 5. Now it's a bit thicker over there. And lastly, I'd like to make the circles a bit smaller. Over in marks.js, Ah, this is where we had a circle radius prop passed in from index.js. So down here, when we render our marks, we're passing in circle radius of 7. And right here, I can just change that to, say, 4, maybe 3. I kind of like the way that looks because uh, you can tell where the points are, but they don't stand out too much. One thing I don't quite like about this right now is that these things are jagged and pointy. See that? There's a really harsh point right there and there and there and also down here. We can address that by using some properties of SVG paths. The stroke line join attribute is a presentation attribute defining the shape to be used at the corners of paths when they are stroked. It can take the following values, arcs, bevel, miter, miter clip, and round. I think this round is the one I'd like to use. In this example, there's a path element and the stroke line join attribute is set to be round. I think we can just set that in our CSS. For the marks path down here, I think we can just say stroke dash line join is round. All right, that seems to have done the trick. No more jagged points. If you don't want to show the points, all you need to do is just get rid of this logic that renders the circles. And we're left with just the lines. By default, the lines are joined by straight segments. So in between each of the points, there's a perfectly straight line. This also leads to another kind of jaggedness. This jaggedness can be overcome by telling D3 what kind of a line generation algorithm to use. To do that, we can set line.curve. This sets the curve factory which defaults to curve linear. And this is the curve factory that makes straight lines between all the points. 
This observable notebook by Phil has some great examples of D3 line. This example shows curve linear and you can change it to use different generators like curve cardinal, curve basis, curve step, and curve natural. Curve basis uses basis splines to make a really smooth line, but sometimes it doesn't hit the original data points. Curve cardinal is a bit smoother than curve linear, and it still manages to hit all the original data points. And curve natural is pretty close to curve cardinal. I think I'll try curve natural. In marks.js, where we set up this line generator, using method chaining, we can add the dot curve option, and we can pass in curve natural which we need to import from D3. Let's import line, comma, curve natural from D3. Oh, there's an error here. It says dot curve is not a function. Oh, that's because we called it with the data and then set dot curve. When we pass data into our line generator, that needs to be the last step. All right, now it's working again. And there are no longer straight lines, but these nice curved lines between the original points. And if we bring back the circles, we can see that this curve hits all of those original data points. One last thing I want to mention is that if we get rid of those points again, and we take a look at this line closely, Notice that the ends of the line are these jagged squares. It's a minor detail, but I don't want any jaggedness in this. Stroke line cap defines the shape to be used at the end of open subpaths when they are stroked. Possible values include butt, round, and square. I'd like to use round. In our CSS, for our marks, in addition to setting stroke line join to be round, we can also set stroke line cap to be round. Now if we take a look at the endings of our line, we can see that it's round. One last little thing is, this sort of feels weird that it goes below that last tick line. And it would be nice if there were lines on the bottom and the top. We can do that by nicing our Y scale. We're already nicing the X scale. Let's do the same for our Y scale. Now the Y scale terminates at nice numbers like 14 and 34. As a last bit of polish, these are overlapping just a bit. We can finesse our tick offset values a little bit. I think I'll change them to 7 for both our bottom axis and our left axis. I'll change that 5 to 7. And now if we take a look, they are no longer overlapping. All right, that's how you can make a silky smooth line chart with React and D3. That's all for making a line chart.